And so we got a big permit spotted out here tailing. We're gonna take a shot. work out getting a permit but I figured I'd share some of my advice with you guys yeah. permit are a very elusive species they're highly selective they're much pickier than bonefish. They're a real challenge to go after. There's very few fish more exciting than a permit. I would swear that a 10 to 15 pound permit when you're casting at them in that moment feels like the biggest fish in the universe. You just get so excited. So there are some uh, things that I wanna go over. Uh, first is gonna be habitat for permit. Permit are often gonna live on these shoals inshore. You can fish for permit in as little as about 18 inches of water all the way up to five or six feet. But generally, you're gonna be on those edges and those shoals. There are some, some places and locations you might be able to fish them over uh, deep uh, blue holes or springs, but for the most part, permit are gonna be an inshore species. They feed primarily on crab patterns uh, or large shrimp patterns, and we're gonna be fishing them. Typically, we're gonna spot the fish from the boat. And Although the idea of a do-it-yourself permit trip sounds great, 95 or 99% of us are gonna be with a guide at the time. Uh, permit will push water and make what we call nervous water or waves. So a lot of times we're not actually seeing the permit itself, but they're floating along, pushing waves, making that water appear a little bit nervous or unsettled. Permit will also tail and expose their tail. And so we, when we see a tailing permit, that's a very happy permit. It's a really exciting thing to be able to witness, but you'll actually see their tails up out of the water. So our strategy is gonna be pulling the boat through likely area, areas based on the, the guide's knowledge of the tides and the behavior of the fish. We may end up casting from the boat at the permit, but there's gonna be other situations where we may need to get in the water and pursue the permit on foot. I've done both and it's very exciting. One thing about that is, it really pays to, to be in pretty decent shape. Um, don't wait till you're too old to go permit fishing. Um, flexibility, being able to climb in and out of this boat effectively, your guide's gonna recognize your ability to do that and he's gonna choose the best strategy based on your ability. So if you're looking for an excuse to shed a few pounds or get in good shape, do that before your permit fishing trip to give you the most opportunity. When it comes to footwear, uh, in the boat, I will wear, we'll wear a boat shoe like this right here. Um, Sims makes them, a couple people make them. You can go barefoot if you want so you can feel the line, but it's hard for me to be up on the boat deck all day or half the day uh, barefoot. Uh, if I'm gonna jump in the water and go, I've got some Zip It style booties from Sims, and uh, those are wet because I've been in the water already today. And uh, those are great for just slipping in the water and being able to pursue that fish on foot. Okay, a couple of tips for when you're up on the deck. When you're up on the deck, uh, more lines, more problems, okay? So uh, generally speaking, I will pull out about four rod lengths a line. It'll depend a little bit on the wind and conditions. And I'm a little bit messy right here in the boat, but generally you wanna make sure you keep your workspace clean and your line is short enough to have control. Uh, when I'm on the deck and we're looking for permit, I try not to distract the guide. I don't screw around casting a whole bunch and making a distraction, rocking the boat. I want my guide to be laser focused on doing what he does best and that's find the fish. So don't be a big distraction up here in front, rocking the boat, doing this and that. Um, 
but when I when I'm in the boat, I'll get my line out and uh, I, I'll just throw my line out once just to make sure everything's good. I can cast a long ways, but more line, more problems. I start with about 40 feet, and if it appears we're going to have a shot that's a little bit longer based on the fish's angle or our ability to get in there, I'll pull out more line at that point. But what I don't want to miss is I don't want to miss a chip shot if a fish pops up close because my line's tangled or wrapped around something. So I believe that 40 feet of line is about right for me. This is a this is line is one color here, but most of the lines that you'll use will wind up being multicolor. We'll talk about more more about tackle in a second. After I strip my line back in. All right, so now we'll talk about permit fishing gear, and I'll share the setup I'm using uh, with you. Permit are going to be fished on floating lines uh, exclusively, as far as I know. Um, they're shallow water fish, or at least we're pursuing them in shallow water. Uh, a floating line, uh, like a Grand Slam style line with about a 40 foot head is very common, very typical. Rio makes one called the Flats Pro. They also make a permit specific line. Grand Slam uh, lines by scientific anglers are great. This is pretty flat conditions here, so I'm actually using a bonefish line, which has a little bit longer taper, sets the fly down a little bit softer. What you don't want is you don't want like a shooting head style line, because that's just going to have you have very little distance control with permit. You need to be very, very accurate on those fish. And so you don't want a shooting head style line. So like no outbound type lines or Titan style lines. Uh, as far as rod weights go, I'm using an eight weight today. It, there is some wind. You're going to hear it in the video. So I apologize for that, but I'm using an eight weight today. Uh, the flies that we're using today aren't particularly heavy. We'll talk just a little bit about flies in a moment and the eight weights handling it just fine. Uh, you want a quality reel. You don't have to have a, a T-bore like I do. I won't you know, claim that you need to, but you're going to be wise to invest in something long-term. If, if saltwater fishing is something you want to do for a while, uh, the more you spend, the more you get. But it should be loaded with at least 200 yards of backing. That's a minimum of 30-pound uh, strength. As far as the leader goes, so we have a floating line. We've got a good reel. We've got a saltwater-specific rod. I've got a Thomas and Thomas sec sextant here. And uh, as far as the leader goes, that's the leader that I like. That's, you know, a bonefish slash saltwater leader, pure fluorocarbon from beginning to end, nine feet at 16 pounds. And I'll bring six of these and I will put one on almost every day so that I have a nice knotless leader to start. My preference is a, a knotless leader. Yes, the fluorocarbon leaders are more expensive. They add up in cost pretty quick, but I, I believe it to be an advantage and it's worth it getting those leaders. So. I'm gonna put that back in there. If I need to repair a leader, which is gonna happen, every time I need to repair a piece of tippet, maybe I catch a fish that gives my tippet abrasions, you do need to repair that. The tippet that I like is the absolute fluorocarbon from Scientific Anglers. Um, now this is not this rated in X for, for diameter. This is 16 pound or 20 pound, okay? That's a stiffer tippet made for turning weighted flies over. It's not made for being flaccid and drifting flies in a stream, but that's a very specific product. I like it because it has a cutter built in. It's super strong, abrasion resistant, and then I'll just splice in on my leaders if I need to repair them. More often, I'm probably going to put a new leader on if I'm permit fishing specifically. Uh, as far as uh, flies go, there are lots of different flies that you can have. Uh, you know, I showed you one earlier. I'll, I'll show you another one. The main thing is there's lots of different flies depending on the destination that you go to. Uh, the, the, the flies are going to vary based on where you go. So you need to have a good selection of them. And I, I laugh and I almost get hesitant about talking about flies because the guide you're with is going to be very particular. So I suggest you show up with a variety of different weights and colors. I'm much more likely to make a major change from weight or color depending on the color of the bottom in that particular area. The guides are gonna like certain colors on certain flats or certain areas. And I always keep an extra fly right here in my hat, okay? So I keep one that's a little bit different than what I'm fishing, that's a bower crab right there. And I'll keep that fly ready in the event that I need to change flies. Maybe the, the fish doesn't like it, or maybe I break off. Uh, I've had that happen before. I've had fish Inter, like a bonefish might intercept my fly or a barracuda might bite my fly and steal it. But if I get a bonefish on and there's a school of tailing permit, I might just go ahead and break that bonefish off and throw that other fly on real quick um, would be something that you could potentially you could potentially do. So 
Flies should be a different variety of, of weights and colors. Um, bring a good selection of those flies. You don't need to have a lot of each one, but it's better to have a diverse variety. And there's a link in the video description uh, down to those flies. As far as other equipment goes, it's a pretty basic setup. You got a tapered leader, you got some crab flies, you got your, your, your rod eight, nine or 10 weight are great for permit. Uh, I like a 10 if it's windy and we're throwing heavier flies. I like an eight weight and this, these, this more shallow environment here because I'm throwing smaller crabs and that eight weight sets it down uh, just a little bit softer. So uh, next I'm gonna share with you just a few casting strategies and stripping techniques for how to catch these fish. All right, so I'm gonna give you a few minutes just on tips and strategies for getting this fish. Now, we've talked about how to set up on the bow of the boat. We've got our line out, more lines, more problems. We're keeping to a, a length of line that we can control in the boat. And if we need more, we'll pull it out at that point. So when the permit gets spotted, we need to make sure that we see the fish. That's number one. The guide's gonna, the guide's gonna tone up and you're gonna hear him start talking in that, that permit tone like, here he come, 11 o'clock. You're gonna hear him and you're gonna go, oh, it's going down. Don't just start flailing around. You can communicate with your guide and he will say, if he says 11 o'clock and say to the boat, and he'll say, you know, whether it's 11 o'clock my position or the boat's position, that's something you want to clear up with your guide really quick. My guide today has done a great job of correcting me and saying, no, 11 o'clock or two o'clock to the boat. And then I know immediately I can snap out. And then what I'll do is I'll point my rod and he'll say left, 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 right, 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 right. And I can see fish pretty well, but being on the elevated deck, the guide is going to have a leg up on you they're going to see the fish before you do nine times out of ten so once i spot the fish i'm going to establish direction of travel and if you can't tell which way the fish is moving and i know that might sound silly or which way the fish is facing when you get all this different vertigo happening where you've got wind chop coming one way and you've got a sun angle kind of reflecting that and making that chop dance and you've got the boat traveling another way and the fish moving another way a lot of times you might have a tough time figuring out which way that fish is facing, especially if the boat's moving quickly. So you can say left or right, and they'll, the guide will just say left or, you know, he'll answer, he'll say left. Okay, so now that I'm gonna make my shot, I've got my leader halfway up here, I've got my line out, and I'm gonna go ahead and figure eight my way out, and I'm gonna start to build my false cast like so, and I'm gonna measure that line. That's why it's really nice to have a longer taper fly line so I can very carefully measure and not all permit casts have to be long, but they all have to be accurate and they all have to land very soft. You can see I decelerated at the very end of that cast. I got my fly to turn over, I set it down soft. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just gonna draw my line tight, just like that. I gotta get that slack out of there. I have to have some connectivity to my crab pattern. So I've got my rod pointed down like this. I've got my hands forward and I'm just drawing that tight. When a crab is fleeing from a permit, it swims down, okay? It does not go up. So we wanna stay connected to our crab pattern, but we, we can't be at risk of moving it too fast. If you move the fly too fast, that crab just doesn't look right, and that, that permit's gonna spook. You can spook a permit just by swimming a crab too fast. The, these fish are neurotic. They're just paranoid all the time. So I wanna stay connected, and then I'm gonna to listen to my guide's instructions oftentimes, because if they're elevated, and we're in the boat, they're gonna have a better view of what's going on. So my, my strip is gonna be very, very slow. There we go, had one right there, there it is, Purr it on. That's a snapper. Wouldn't that be amazing though? Um, and to answer your question, <clears throat> no, we never, ever blind cast for permit. <laughs> it's never a good, never a good plan. All right, <clears throat> all right, so. So apparently the snapper likes the slow strip too. So I'm making my cast again. We'll go through this live. And there we go. I laid it down nice and soft, rods down. I pulled it tight. Now I'm either gonna wait instructions or I'm gonna wait to see if the fish is engaging it. Permit will eat your fly while it's sinking. It's one of the few circumstances in fly fishing where a sinking fly actually looks real. Typically that doesn't look real. Rising fly looks more real. So I'm gonna stay connected. And you have to be very, very conscientious of what way the boat is moving. Uh, if, it, if it's making slack in the line, you need to kind of take that slack up as far as the boat drift goes. But we're moving that fly very, very slowly on a long, slow strip, really just staying connected, really trying to help that crab 
continue sinking but be under slight tension make it a little bit easier to see if it lays my belief is when it's laying flat on the bottom while it might look real it's very tough to get a permit to see your crab when it's just laying flat on the bottom so i'm typically going to be moving mine very slowly and uh, there, there are lots of tips on presentation. More advanced lessons should be taught by your guide on scene. There's no substitute for experience. So I'm laying my cast down. I put it right near the fish, about two feet in front of the fish. And I pulled my line tight. Now I'm gonna wait. The fish, it looks like the fish is moving towards it. It's engaged. And I'm gonna make a slow strip like this. And then I've gotta get my hand back up quickly and get connectivity back on that fly and I'm bringing it back up, and then the fish is turning away slightly, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna wait. The fish is wandering around like so. It looks like it's moving back toward my fly again, and I'm gonna slowly tension up and move that crab again. When I see that fish accelerate and tail toward where I believe my fly is, that's typically an eat. A lot of the time, you can't wait to feel the permit. I made that mistake dozens of times thinking that they're like bonefish. Bonefish are very aggressive. They grab your fly, they don't spit it out. They grab and go, you're gonna feel them bite. A permit will just pick that fly up. And since it's moving towards you, it'll often make a little bit of slack in your line and you won't feel it. And that permit can drop the crab very quickly. So when I see the permanent accelerate and tip down like this, maybe tail or make a little extra acceleration, I'm gonna go ahead and check it with a little hook set like that. It doesn't have to be much. If, if, I, if the fish is hooked, boom, I've got the fish hooked and you'll see uh, at some point I'm hoping to hook a permit and you'll see on video how to do this, but I wanna get my hands apart so that I'm less likely, it looks awkward, but I'm less likely to have that line jump over the butt of my rod like so. And uh, I'm gonna let the line fish run out and uh, then fighting them is a whole, whole different, different tactic. If the fish, if I, if I check it like this with that little set, that fish may still be engaged or may get the fish's attention and I can continue stripping. You absolutely do not trout set unless you wanna get thrown in the water by your guide. You'll regret it. Um, you do not wanna trout set, you know, stay tight to that fly, hands low, just like that. Slow, 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 slow. Fish is turning away, I'm gonna stop. Okay, fish is wandering back toward the flies area and I'm gonna go ahead and slow again. Stripping, 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 stripping. Looks like he ate it. Nope, he didn't. I've got my hand back up and I'm gonna continue that slow presentation for that fish. Uh, if the fish moves away and I'm gonna pick up and recast, one tip for picking up and recast is raise your rod slow, draw that fly out of there, then accelerate and jam it back. But what you do not wanna do is you do not just wanna pick that fly up aggressively when it's near the fish unless you wanna spray spray a school of permit all over the flat and you'll never see them again. So if I'm gonna recast, I'm gonna go ahead and strip slow and then I'm gonna raise, just draw that fly out of there quiet, jackhammer it back, and then I'm back in, I'm gonna move a little to the right, and I'm gonna put it back on them like that. So those are some tips for permit fishing. I hope you find the strategies helpful. Uh, subscribe and like the video. If you have a question, put it in the comments, and I'll try to help you out. But we're gonna wrap this up, and we're gonna go try to catch one of these, one of these guys.